It's no secret that social media has contributed to shoving unrealistic body ideals and standards in our faces, which has led to an increase in body comparison and body dissatisfaction. And as simple as it would be to claim that all of our problems will just disappear once we've unfollowed those triggering Instagram accounts, the reality is that the issue is a lot deeper than that. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of those influences that affect our relationship with our body image. We're going to cover some of the negative consequences of experiencing body dissatisfaction and why it's so important for you to pay attention to those thoughts as they come up. And I'm also going to leave you with a few tips on how you can begin to heal your relationship with your body image. So let's begin. So I like to categorize these influences into two separate buckets. On one hand, we have the external influences, and these are things that are somewhat outside of our control. These include things like family and peers, sociocultural narratives, and of course, the media. And then we also have our internal influences, and these are things that are happening within us. And this includes things like the judgments that we make about our bodies, um, our self-esteem or level of self-fulfillment, and our past experiences and the meaning that we derive from them. Now, oftentimes we see the external bucket, all of the things that are outside of our control, pouring into our internal bucket and affecting what is going on within us. And I think that there is a little bit more of an empowered way to view this relationship. I like to see the external bucket as yes, pouring into our internal bucket, but we have a funnel that we can control the flow at which the external things are affecting us internally. And the more that we work on ourselves, the more that we commit to making our internal state as strong and solid as possible, the less that those external influences are going to flow into our internal state and affect us. So all of this is to say that the way that we feel about our bodies is less about our bodies and more about our relationship with ourselves and what's going on inside of us internally. There was actually a study done to understand the predictor of body dissatisfaction, and it was determined in the results that although body mass did play a role in body dissatisfaction, the underlying cause of body dissatisfaction was actually internalization, the internalization of all of those influences that we talked about. So now I'm going to talk about some of the negative effects of body dissatisfaction and why it is so important for us to really pay attention to these thoughts and address them when they occur. So the first thing is the effect on body mass. So there was a study that revealed that body dissatisfaction and avoidant behaviors that result from it, specifically isolation, led to a development of obesity. So if you could think about when somebody isn't feeling too hot in their skin, you know, maybe they are afraid that they look fat or they're just not feeling good about themselves in general, they're less likely to go out and hang out with their friends. Well, this actually leads to a decrease in physical activity and also oftentimes when people feel a void from not feeling love and connection from other people, we tend to fill that void with food and so binging occurrences do increase as well. So that is an example of how body dissatisfaction can actually lead to the development of obesity. On the flip side, studies have shown that fear of being deemed as unattractive has resulted in dietary restraint, eating concerns, binging, purging behaviors. So on a, both ends of the spectrum, body dissatisfaction can either lead to obesity or lead to a problematic relationship with food that could lead to a decrease in body mass. So that is how body dissatisfaction can affect body mass. So piggybacking off of that, we're now going to talk about how body dissatisfaction can affect you psychologically. There was a survey done on over a thousand adolescent girls to determine whether it was dietary restraint or body dissatisfaction that led to a host of adverse effects. And the results from this study actually showed that although dietary restraint did lead to a negative relationship with food, body dissatisfaction actually resulted in all of these adverse outcomes. So as you can see, body dissatisfaction can lead to all of the things that we are trying to avoid. And so that is a really big reason why it should be paid attention to and taken seriously. 
An interesting thing to note is that body image can be manipulated to either meet society's ideal expectations or as a way to rebel against it. But ultimately, both are going to end up in the same place, which is dissatisfaction. When dissatisfaction is the driving force of behavior change, you will always be left unsatisfied. So I have an example of this from my past that I think will be interesting to weave in here. So throughout high school, I felt like I had struggled with really finding my voice and expressing what I needed or wanted, um, had a hard time setting boundaries, and just overall had a hard time expressing myself authentically or even just getting to know myself in general. Towards the end of high school, I began to find myself being drawn to the female bodybuilding physique, specifically the physique and figure divisions. And I just really loved the look of a strong woman. And so I decided to set out after bodybuilding. After that, I did CrossFit. After that, I did Olympic lifting. And once I started to gain the muscles that I wanted, gain the strength that I wanted, um, I also started to reject the things that society deemed as feminine and that I saw as weak. On one hand, I just wanted to really de-emphasize my sexuality because of my experience in high school. I didn't really know how to set my boundaries. And rather than working on that internally, I wanted to express that externally. And I was still left perpetually unsatisfied, which is part of the reason why I went on to do martial arts so I could quite literally weaponize my body so that I could finally feel invincible and strong. And so all of this is to say that even if you attain the body that you want, it will never be enough until you work on that deeper yearning that your soul is calling for. So... That is where our body body image struggles come from. It's a deeper yearning from inside that is expressing itself as body dissatisfaction. And so once we are willing to look in there, pull it out, take a look at it and work on it, uh, we're always going to be somewhat unsatisfied. Now I'm going to be moving into four steps that you can begin to integrate into your life to cultivate your healing journey with your body. The first step is gratitude gratitude for your struggles as you explore them. This is your soul's journey. This is your life curriculum. Every single person in life has a curriculum that is going to move them and propel them into diving deeper into themselves and understanding themselves. And this just happens to be yours. So recognize it as a gift, recognize it as an opportunity to evolve into the best version of yourself. Step number two is awareness and curiosity. Being able to remain aware as the thought comes up and being able to separate yourself a little bit, create some space and just look at it with curiosity. You don't have to judge it. You don't have to get mad at yourself for thinking the thought. Just ask yourself, where did this thought come from? Why am I having this thought? What fears or beliefs are feeding into this thought? And really looking at it as an opportunity to learn more about yourself and more about the subconscious triggers that keep bringing this thought up over and over again. Step number three is acceptance. Remember that changing something through hate will only bind you to a vicious cycle as it leaves you perpetually unsatisfied. Being able to look in the mirror and accept you for who you are accept you for your limitations, accept you for who you are today. Remember that attaining the body of your dreams, it's not going to guarantee you happiness. So being able to find happiness in where you are today and find the little things about yourself that you are grateful for and remind yourself that you are enough as you are today. Finally, step number four is dedication and compassion. Dedication to changing these thought patterns, because that is what they are, patterns. Your mind has been doing this for so long, probably ever since you were born, and were bombarded with all of these ideas that you should look a certain way or be a certain way or always be aspiring to be a different person. And 
that shit is hard to break. Your thoughts are going to do what they do. And it's even harder when you've got society and media and family coming at you and reinforcing the very things that you're trying to break. Trust me, I hear you. And that is also why it is so important to have compassion for yourself. So dedication in the sense of I am dedicated to, yes, being aware of the thought as it comes up and looking at it from a non-judgmental point of view and not entertaining the damn thought. It's just a thought. Thoughts do what they do. The mind does what it does. It's a habit and I'm trying to break it and I'm dedicated to breaking it. So when the thought comes up, maybe you've already done your self-reflection and introspection. I don't need to. I don't need to entertain this thought anymore. I'm going to think about something else. I'm going to listen to a song. I'm going to, you know, do something that makes me feel good. Don't entertain the thought because you're only going to reinforce that vicious thought cycle. And of course, compassion because habits, like I said, they are hard to break and it's not going to happen overnight. And so, like I said, not getting mad at yourself for entertaining the thought if you do just recognizing okay that's what happened this time next time I will try to do better and that's just where I'm at and so compassion and acceptance are also tightly coupled so that is it for this video I really hope that it helped some of you out there I just want to let you know that if you struggle with body image you're not alone I and so many others struggle with this on a daily basis and I really just wanted to make this video to bring to your awareness that we really do have more control than we think despite being bombarded with images and messaging from media and society. Um, ultimately, the ball is in our court and I think that that is a very empowered place to be. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.